Hi, this is Rachel from Rachel. Miami Lakes in Florida. This message of hope is for you. Quote, I embrace my rival, but only to strangle him. Jean Racine, French playwright. Quote, pride is an admission of weakness. It secretly fears all competition and dreads all rivals. Fulton John Sheen, Archbishop of the Catholic Church. Quote, anyone who imagines they can work alone winds up surrounded by nothing but rivals without companions. The fact is, no one ascends alone. Lance Armstrong, former professional road racing cyclist. So there are two definitions for a rival. The first one is a noun. It says this, a person competing with another for the same objective or for superiority in the same field of activity. The second is a verb, to be or seem to be comparable to. So why are we talking about rivals today? <laughs> I know it's kind of a strange church message, but I have to tell you that this is message has been percolating in my heart probably from birth because I have real trouble with rivals. I don't know if anybody else maybe has trouble with rivals. If you don't right now, you probably will at some point in your life. And I know this, this is going to bless you and I hope it does as it did me. So for a while, I have been asking the Lord to remove my feelings of shame and embarrassment when people try to go over my head to get their way to manipulate a situation or when people intentionally embarrass me in public correct me lecture me that kind of stuff okay it had gotten to the point unfortunately that I was gossiping about it and calling it venting Okay, I know somebody else is guilty of that in here too, right? I'm not alone. Here, I need to vent. I'm going to tell you everything they did. Exactly, right? So I was even going to people's bosses and telling them what they had done. Ooh, I was defending myself very loudly in meetings and that kind of thing. And what was going on was that my behavior had become inconsistent with my values as a Christian, it happens, right? So I've been praying to God, you know, help me out with this. And it's funny because it's never the answer you think it's going to be. <laughs> the kingdom is totally different than the world. Yes. So I was praying for, for their removal, right? But now I'm no longer asking them to be removed. I no longer run from them, you know, when they're coming at me. What he did was that he, God led me to root for my rivals. You know, the Bible tells us, Jesus said, to pray for our enemies, right? Well, it doesn't look like what I thought it looked like. Pray for my enemies, like, oh God, take them down. <laughs> oh God, remove them from any kind of influence. No, that's not what praying for your enemies looks like. What it looks like is God bless them. Thank you for putting them in my life. You're teaching me something here. And I'm going to come out of, on the other side better than I am before I knew them. Thank you. And bless them, God. Bless my rival. Do good for them. That's what Jesus said right from the cross. They know not what they do. So with all of that in mind, this, this has really dramatically changed my life. And I'm, I'm just hoping that you get something out of it, too, that will free you here today. So if we apply the principles that we're going to be talking about today, you will see a breakthrough. You will see a breakthrough. It's even kind of flowed out into my musician life. Okay, there's a lot of musicians in here, so I know they're going to get me in a second. As a singer, or maybe as a, generally as a musician, you walk into a room of other musicians and suddenly you're under the microscope. You're being judged. <laughs> you're like, oh, what's happening here? Everybody in here is your rival. And it had gone to the point that I was not praising them. I was not saying, you did a great job. Why was I so tight-fisted? It's almost like me telling them they were great meant that I was less so. That's crazy. That's not how it works. When you give, you receive. Not when you hold tightly, you keep. That's all you're going to keep. You know? If you open your hand, you're going to receive. Wow, that was kind of like mind-blowing to me. 
So now I praise generously because they are doing a great job. They have a gift. It's a wonderful thing that they're sharing, and we get to share it together. That's awesome. So I want to give you this illustration, what we're looking at today. Okay. This nut is you. <laughs> so you are this nut. Got it? Okay. Here's the nut. This is the grave that your rivals want to put you in. Okay. This is the dirt they use to cover you in that grave. Everybody got it? So what is this? Nut? That's right. You're the nut. Exactly. Okay. Excellent. So now that we've established that, who are our rivals? So they're people who challenge you at your job, you know? Maybe they're always coming at you and saying, you know, you didn't do that right. Or, you know, or they're going to tell your boss, you know, Rachel did that. So, you know, be careful of that. Or they, it's in your, your marriage. You even have rivalry within your marriage. When you don't agree on something, you know, when things aren't going as easily, stuff like that. And there are rivals in your family. And if you have family here right now, you're probably like, preach a sister, right? It's a true story. Even in ministry, which you wouldn't think that there would be rivalry in ministry, but there really is. How about Facebook and social media? Yeah. Okay, yes, because what are they called, trolls? <laughs> that's a terrible name, but you get what I'm saying. They're trolls. I know that's horrible, but it's what they're called, right? So even in everyday customer service experiences, we have rivals, you know? And we're like, I want to take you down, if we're honest. <clears throat> anyway. So why are rivals there and how do we handle them according to God's word? All right. So let's start with rivals at work. So the book of Nehemiah is about Nehemiah. And he was in the process of rebuilding Jerusalem. King Nebuchadnezzar had completely destroyed Jerusalem. So here was this man who wanted to rebuild Jerusalem once again. So, of course, you know when you're trying to do something great, you're going to get opposition. Somebody's going to come at you and be like, you can't do it. You don't have the tools. You know, you're, you're just not in the right position. All kinds of stuff. And I, I don't remember the quote exactly, but it basically says, if you're not being criticized, you're not doing something great. Right? So, Nehemiah was trying to rebuild this wall. So, three men came at him. You're never going to do it. We don't want you to build that wall. They were trying everything to get him to stop. So they send messengers saying, come down and speak to us. Come down from the wall and speak to us. We want to talk to you about what you're doing. And this is what Nehemiah says to him. I knew they were scheming to hurt me. So I sent messengers back with this. I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. Why should the work come to a standstill just so I can come down to see you? So what is Nehemiah saying here? He's basically saying, I'm not going to come down to your level. I have something to accomplish. I'm not going to get down in that dirt with you. Isn't that just like people at work? So let's look at that a little bit. What does the dirt look like? How about that guy that does nothing at work? And so you get all of the projects because the bosses know that you're going to do a great job. Here you go. Thank you very much. How about that person that blames you for their mistake? And they don't do it like all out in the open. They're more like, you know, you should talk to Rachel about that. I believe she knows something about that mistake. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Here goes the dirt. Awesome. How about the boss that presents your work as their work. Ooh, come on. Exactly, there's the dirt. Whoop, whoop, loving it. Exactly, exactly, right. So, rivals at work are there to sharpen your focus on the real work. What is the real work? The real work is showing them God's glory because you will not be brought down to their level. You are going to be good. You're going to honor God in what you do, and he will honor you in the end. Amen. Yes. So in promotion, that's our next area of rivalry. 
promotion, we're talking about, so in Mark and in other uh, Gospels as well, there's this story about Jairus. Jairus, we talked about this at Bible study for you guys that were there. So exactly. So Jairus comes up to Jesus and he's like, my daughter is dying right now. If you don't come to my house right now and lay hands on her, she's dead. She's done. And Jesus says, yes, I will come. Let's do this. And what happens is that suddenly this woman reaches out to his garment and she is healed from an issue of blood that she's going through, completely healed. There's an interruption there. Suddenly she's promoted to healing and that, that little girl, she died. She died. And this is what I have to tell you about this. He's not late to his appointment with you. He will be there on time. He went ahead and saved that little girl, but he did allow for the interruption so he could save somebody else too. That's our God right there. He takes the time to save the woman and also to raise the little girl. Here's what the verse we have for this. It says, he took her by the hand and said to her, Talithakom, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. He will promote you in his time, but it, it is sure. It is sure. So let's look at what our rivals look like in promotion. Oh, yeah, this is going to get good. We've decided to hire somebody brand new, and you've been here for eight years. And in fact, I think it might be my administrative assistant that is going to take your promotion. Thank you. How about... You're renting, and you've been renting forever, and you've been saving for a house forever, but man, it just doesn't look like it's gonna happen. And all of these people are like, look, my new keys, I just bought a new house. I'm, you know, 100 years younger than you, and I have it all figured out, blah, blah, blah. That's promotion right there, right? Because you got a house. How about you've been trying forever to conceive, and you see all of these people posting about how they have, you know, they're pregnant, and they're gonna have this beautiful family, and all of that stuff. He is never going to be late to his promotion of you. Rest assured in that. Rivals and promotion are there to show you his faithfulness. He is faithful. He will be there for you. It's coming. Hold on. Don't give up. Amen, amen. How about family? Ooh, this one's good. So the poster kid for family dysfunction, Cain and Abel, right? So Cain killed his brother because Abel was giving from his heart to the Lord and Cain was giving the bare minimum. But he didn't like that God was pleased with Abel. So what did he do? He killed him. And this is what his word says. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Ouch. Because we do this too. Yeah, we think I'll just eliminate them from my life, stop talking to them, and suddenly they're not a problem anymore. They are unreasonable. They don't value family. They have different values than mine. But what really is this revealing? We are unreasonable. We don't value family. We are intolerant of different values because our family has been given to us by God we're there to show them God's love and mercy kindness forgiveness it's not one time I hate to tell you as much as I'd like to say it's one time it's not let's see what does this look like why aren't you more like your sister Ooh. how about <laughs> you're choosing your new family over your real family. Because mm. you know it's true, that's why you're laughing. <laughs> How about, you should just divorce that woman because she can't keep a clean house. Mm. Oh, that's my house. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shut up, Kevin. Anyway. <laughs> Whoopsies. So, exactly. rivals in family, brace yourselves for this one are there to reveal your true self. It's like looking in a mirror. That's right, Re it reveals your true self, where you are in that moment. 
I don't want to deal with you. I'm, I'm not going to allow you in my life. You're lucky to be in my life. No, that's not the way God works. God says, forgive. God says, be merciful. God knows you needed mercy. You needed forgiveness. And he gave it abundantly. What does he say? Give and you will receive. Give. And the more you give, the more you receive. You know, in the measure which, which you give, you will receive. I don't know, but I want everything God has got for me. All of it. I'm not going to be tight-fisted with any of this. How about grumblers against your leadership and ideas? Ooh, okay. Because we have a bunch of creative people here. I know that you have ideas, and somebody has shot them down at one point or another. How about this? The sons of Korah rose up against Moses' leadership. Moses' leadership. He led them out of, you know, oh my gosh, really? He parted the Red Sea? Yeah, it's amazing. So they accused Moses of setting himself up above all others in the Lord's assembly. They were basically saying, eh, who put you in charge? Come on, we're all good people. We're all, you know, uh, friends of the Lord. Why? And this is what it says. Then he addressed Korah and his gang. In the morning, God will make clear who is on his side, who is holy. God will take his stand with the one he chooses. Oh, I love that. God will take his stand with you, the chosen one. The Lord removed the sons of Korah. And it wasn't like in a pretty way. It was pretty bad. And also the 250 people that were with them. So... What do, what do our rivals look like in leadership? I know you're already bracing yourself. What could this be? Let's see. Your idea is so dumb. Gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> how, <laughs> how about I would do such a better job than them? <laughs> Please. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would. How about you don't have a degree? You don't have a degree. How about, I'm going to go around to every one of our mutual friends and gain support for my side and make you irrelevant and nobody will listen to anything you say. Boom. Thanks very much. How about in ministry? We have rivals in ministry. And ministry is basically, is you guys, you know, in your lives, everybody around you is your ministry. You will have rivals for that. Who is the poster child for rivals in ministry? Judas. Right? That makes sense to me. He betrayed Jesus. And I have just been given this revelation this week. I know it's really basic, but it just blew my mind when it dropped into my spirit. Jesus knew everything about Judas the entire time. He knew he was skimming the books. He knew that Judas was sinning the entire time. He knew that Judas was unholy, right? And he still shared the Last Supper with him, still called him to follow him and be a part of his life and to be known. Who does that? He gave his body and his blood for his enemy. And then he washes his feet. He washes his feet. That's God. That's the kingdom right there. You did me wrong, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to serve you. And that's how people get to know the love of God, his mercy. You're not too dirty to come to Jesus. Never. He is the soap. He can't get dirty. So Jesus needed Judas as a rival. He needed him. So Jesus could arrive at his calling. That's to save mankind. And through belief in him, it was because Judas was his rival that created all of this possibility. It says this, When he had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. In glorifying him, he himself is glorified. Glory all around. 
When we serve others, God is glorified. When we stay low in those situations, God exalts us. And he shines. And people want to know who he is as a result. So what do we want to do when these rivals get in our way? Well, when you're dealing with a customer service rep, you already know what you want to do. I want to see your manager. Who's in charge? Get him on the phone right now because I'm not happy and I'm the customer and I'm always right. Mm. Right? The, the thing that's going on in your mind, and Vivian and, and Liz will attest to this, is your basic. Right? That's what you want to do. And who's, who's using you at that moment? That's the enemy. Because the enemy is here to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants you to act ungodly. He wants you to take matters into your own hands. He uses disrespect, public humiliation, and gossip. What does God want us to do when these rivals get in our way? Well, God uses rivals to promote us. He puts them alongside us to challenge us so we can step up our game. We get better when we have a rival that's, you know, competing with us. It's like the rehearsal before the recital. You know, and I guess the musicians will get this better than anybody else, but you know how you practice scales? That's what you do. That's all of this is the process behind the scenes before you get to the recital, which is your purpose. Your calling. It's the process of shaking out all of the yuck in you until you become unshakable. God says you are a royal priesthood. You have come into your royal position for such a time as this. Why? Because we see it all over social media. The world is breeding hate and divisiveness. I mean, politics, come on, you see it all the time. Well, what is the church here for? Christians and the church are here to bring love and unity. If you're part of that conversation that is adding to division, you know who's using you. It's not God. So let me show you why you can trust that God uses supernatural measures to protect and defend you against harm. We're going to start with Genesis 50:20, which says, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Mm. How about Romans 8.28? Lots of us know this one. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. All things who have been called according to his purpose. How about Isaiah 54.17, which says, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn this is the heritage of the servants. This is your heritage. If you honor God, God will honor you. And when God rewards, he does it with major swag. Because not only do you get blessed, but the people around you get blessed. Amen. You've seen it before in your life, right? So let's look at that a little bit. Proverbs 16, 7 says, when the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Proverbs 25, 21 says, If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. What does the world tell us? The world tells us, let him die. I'm not giving him anything. Mm -mm. He did me wrong. He's dead to me. <laughs> right? But here the word is telling us, help him. Help him get whole again. The only way he's going to get whole again is that I act right and let God do what he does. So I have a couple of stories in my own life of this kind of playing itself out. And this is kind of to take it to the next level because I feel like this is advanced for me because this is tough lessons to root for your rivals and really pray for them. You will experience breakthrough. So, Here's my story from at work. So this year, I found an error in somebody else's work that would have cost my company $150,000. So I found the error, and I went to the person and told them, this is what happened, and this is the error that you did, you know, um, whatever. And then this person said, thank you. 
I walked away, went to my office, sitting down. All of a sudden, I get called into a meeting of all of the head honchos, and I'm sitting there, and nobody is saying a word. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to have to speak. So I open my mouth, and I'm like, we found, we found an error, and it would have cost us $150,000, but we're making a plan so that it doesn't happen. So what does this look, you know, in this situation, it looks like I made the mistake. I'm here admitting it to everybody. You know, this error happened, and nobody is taking the blame. Nobody's saying, oh, my bad, no. And so in that moment, I feel God tell me, I'm going to show you my glory. Don't say anything. And I'm like, are you sure? Because I want to be like, it was her. You know, I want it to be like, it wasn't me. I'm up for a promotion this year, guys. It's not me. But I was like, okay. And I'm walking away going, oh, my gosh, what's about to happen? You know, whatever. So I sit into my office, and I'm just sitting there having all of these crazy thoughts. I'm texting Vivian. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe what just happened. Can you believe this person did this to me? You know. So anyway, I'm sitting there, and the, the boss comes into my office, and they're like, I know. And I just looked, and I was like, you know? And I'm like, I know. I have no idea what they meant by that. You know, it could have been anything, but it turns out that they did know. They, they knew somehow, I don't know, that it wasn't me who caused the problem. And I am getting that promotion, by the way. Yeah, God is faithful. But it would have been so easy for me to be like, you know, this person. But, you know, God was good to me in not letting me go there. And when, when you do things his way, it's amazing because you don't have shame over how you got there. Right? You don't have to feel bad about how you got it. You got it because he's good and he wants to bless you. And you did things the right way. That's just wonderful. The other thing is, um, so I recently had a gig uh, at had to sing a gospel song it was for like a dancing with the stars kind of thing um and there were four other singers and i kind of alluded to this to this, this earlier but singers are really territorial <laughs> so i walk into the room and i see these four eyes go and i'm like yeah, okay i'm not sure what's about to happen here but so i had in my mind stay low stay low stay low okay so i'm sitting there and I'm letting somebody else take over. You know, there are mistakes. There's all kinds of stuff happening, but I'm like, I'm just going to do my part. I'm going to do it right. We're going to come together. At the end of that rehearsal, we were friends. Everybody was just, oh, it's going to be great, blah, blah, blah. And I found out that they do ministry. They're believers as well. And I know in my heart that we are going to do ministry together someday, and we're going to impact people that haven't even been born yet. We're going to reach them for the kingdom. And I just think that's, that's so, so, such an amazing thing that God will let you kind of come under his umbrella, you know, and stay safe. If you do things his way, he will reward you. Why? Because God can use my five loaves and two fish that I offer him when I do things his way. I want to become dangerously unshakable. What do I mean by that? Well, if I can't be shaken, nobody can intimidate me. No one can come at me and me think that I'm going to lose. Mm -mm, it's not going to happen. Rivals lead to your arrival, to the next level and blessing, because a rival leads to mastery over your weakness root for your rivals. Give with an open hand. Teach others. Sometimes we worry that if we teach other thing, others everything we know, that we're going to become irrelevant. But that's not how it works. If we teach them, God is going to elevate us to the next level. It's not going to stay there. God gives with an open hand. You will find your rewards. Mentor others. They need you. No one can hurt you. You are the king's kid. No one has authority over your life but your Father God in heaven. No one can change the outcome of your life but you. And this is our verse for that, which is Romans 8.31. It says this, If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. 
won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. We are chosen by God as his own. And he protects his own. We have the proof because he gave us his own son to prove it. We are going to win in life no matter what circumstance comes around and we find ourselves in. The plan is happening. But we have to do our part, which is act right and trust God. That's it. He will blast every evil thing out of your way. Remember that, that illustration we've got over here. So who's this? That's right. You're the nut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what's in this nut? A tree. This is your potential. This is your potential. And what your rivals don't realize as they try to bury you is that your God is a God of the resurrection. They are putting you in exactly the right place for you to bust through with new life, stronger to adversity, unstoppable with everything that they're trying to put you under. That's amazing. I want to leave you with this verse today that has been kind of a life verse for me. I hope you will adopt it too. Nehemiah 6, 2 through 3 says this. I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. Let's pray together. Let's pray head bowed and eye closed. Oh, Jesus, we're just so thankful today. We're so grateful, like we were singing earlier. Oh, it's just flowing from our hearts. You give us victory, God. We praise you. And we remember now that Jesus called Judas while he was yet in sin and invited Judas to be with him. In the end, it was Judas that gave up on Jesus because Jesus never gave up on him and he's not giving up on us and maybe you're here today and you feel like you've given up on Jesus you've started going down dark roads and strayed from him this is you and you're ready to come clean and make a fresh start it's not too late it's never late come to the altar during communion I know we're doing communion today with him and receive his forgiveness don't carry that around with you anymore also, if there's anyone here that doesn't yet have a personal relationship with the Lord, it would be our honor to pray with you and ask him into your heart and life. Our pastor's here for you to do that at any time. If the Lord is leading you to make this decision today, I just, I'm so excited for you and the life that you're about to, to walk into. It's wonderful. Grace and peace to you. In Jesus' name, amen. A big thank you for an awesome job. Hey, uh, again, I'm going to, come on, come on.